All right, I hope everybody can hear me and see me. Um, we're about ready to do the kickoff for the Sabre baseball map, and I am really excited. It has been uh, quite a lot of work. A lot of people have helped get us to this point. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'm really excited to kind of show it to you and roll it out and show you all the amazing features that it has. So I just kind of want to get started with the slideshow. I'm going to share my screen here real quickly. And if you haven't seen it on the landing page for the Sabre Landmarks Committee, there is now access to the map. You'll see a picture that looks exactly like this. And all you need to do is click on that and it'll open up the map. But I just kind of wanted to go through some of the features first. And for anybody that's on the call today that isn't familiar with what the Landmarks Committee is doing and what the baseball map is all about, I just thought I'd kind of go through a little bit of that. So the committee's goals at this point are to compile the database of baseball related sites and attractions across North America and beyond. If you're on this call and you're anything like me, you're probably driving out of your way to see something like you see here, this amazing Josh Gibson mural that's just outside of Pittsburgh. Um, but this is a way that we are able to put onto a map and give in information on how to see all of these things, including uh, ballparks and murals and statues and so forth um, across America and beyond. And kind of encouraging Sabre members to visit and document these sites. Um, we're hoping to kind of foster collaborative relationships with the local chapters so that they can help us put sites on the map that we don't have yet and maybe um, engage in a little discussion with regard to what sites in their area might be must-sees for anybody that's coming to visit and needs to take in a little bit of baseball. Um, maintaining the Saber baseball map for fans to use while traveling and also kind of documenting and recording in case of any future loss or destruction. A mural like this 10 years from now may deteriorate because of the way it's painted or a new owner of the building may cover it up completely because they bought it and they don't like it. So we definitely want to make sure that we're preserving the information and all of those sites so that future generations can see what it used to be. All of the things that are going to be on the map are broken into uh, these categories here. So. The first is going to be ballparks, which includes active major league ballparks, affiliated minor league ballparks, independent minor leagues, and summer collegiate leagues. And each of these you'll see are uh, categorized by level. Statues is the category, but this also includes busts and other sculptures of players and coaches and broadcasters and owners and so forth. Markers, as I'm sure you're aware, would be those big plaques and other stone monuments and so forth that show the places where things happen and people that are important to baseball. Murals includes also public art featuring baseball related themes. Uh, the museums section includes not only museums, but also places where there's a permanent exhibit or a permanent display that's dedicated to baseball. Uh, we're trying to avoid at this point any kind of temporary exhibits or uh, periodical exhibits, those kinds of things. We want the map to show something that you would expect to be there. Uh, grave sites, we're going to be including on this map some select grave sites that include the GPS coordinates that go pretty close to the area of the headstone, if not right on it. Um, some movie locations, which is distinctive filming locations, think Feel the dreams or the ballparks that were featured in a league of their own, those kinds of things. And then any other sites that may be of interest to a traveling baseball fan that is worth a, a photo opportunity or some kind of roadside attraction. Here's a list of the things that we probably won't find on the map. The first one is places where there's really no remaining physical structure, there's no marker. There are all kinds of places where ballparks used to be, but when you go there, there's nothing to see. It's just a new building or 
something else that uh, is in its place like a, an empty field. We're at this point not trying to include those. There's also a number of ballparks or ball fields across the country that are named after famous ball players. But if there's not any additional connection to the location, like that person played there when they were a child, or there's no plaque there, there's no statue there to, that was dedicated, we're kind of thinking about leaving those off. There's probably some other places where it involves somebody that has some ties to baseball, but was really famous for another reason. I have the example here near Soldier Field here in Chicago. George Hallis has a statue there and is famous as the owner of the Bears. Some people may not know that he played for the Yankees at some point, uh, right before Babe Ruth started in the outfield there. But uh, the statue really has no connection to his brief baseball career. So it's one that we were thinking about leaving off. And restaurants, a lot of times restaurants, especially when a player is active in that market, will have a restaurant named after him. Or maybe we'll have one where there's an agreement that they're able to share some of the revenue just for using their name, that kind of thing. But for the most part, unless it's a tried and true restaurant that's been there forever and is not expected to last only as long as the players in town, then maybe we'll put it on there. Or if they have a substantial memorabilia collection, that's worth seeing those kinds of things. But the restaurants, for the most part, we're going to leave off. And without further ado, here is the place that we're going to go to next is the baseball map. So here's how to access it. If you have looked at the Landmarks Research Committee page on the Sabre website, you may have seen that the map is there now. All you have to do is click on this map and it'll take you right there. So using the map, you're able to do it on your PC or your laptop, also on a tablet, in your smartphone. Unless you wanna keep coming back here to do it, I'd suggest you bookmark it. And if, it, if it's something that you're gonna be using on your phone, definitely add it to your home screen so you could just open it and you're good to go. And so here we are on the Landmarks Committee page. You can see if you haven't visited here that we have some information on what you're gonna find on the map. If you know of corrections or any additions that need to be made, there's a link to the uh, Google Sheet that's going to let you put that information in. And if at any point you need to contact uh, me or Chris or Mark, our uh, email addresses are right here. But in order to access the map, all you do is hit the map. It's going to open here and ta-da, here we are. We've got the map up. So I know that looking at it, it probably is a little bit daunting. There's a lot of stuff that's on here, a lot of pins. But if we kind of start over here on the left, the first thing that's going to pop up, and this is going to open automatically, is the grouping tool. So you can see here along the side are different categories, ballparks for affiliated minor leagues, collegiate summer, major league, We've also included spring training facilities and some winter league facilities now that are in Puerto Rico. We have homes and movie locations and museums and statues and so forth. So you're able to customize the points of interest that you wanna see. If you're interested in seeing everything, then you leave the show all here up. If you wanna just click on one thing and all I wanna see are affiliated minor league ballparks or all I want to see are where the major league ballparks are across the country. You click on it, go to it, and then there, there you go. You're ready to go. And also, it's going to help you eliminate anything that you don't want to see. For instance, you're traveling in December. You know that there's not going to be any baseball being played live in the United States. You can click off all of the ballparks so that you're taking it off anything that's active. If you're not interested in grave hunting or 
You don't want to stop just to see a marker on a building. You could take that off. Or if, for instance, you're traveling for a reason other than going to see a baseball game, you can take off the baseball games if you're not going to have time to see a game, those kinds of things. So the routing tool is the next one here. And if you go right under the grouping tool icon, you open up the routing and directions tool. And you'll see here it gives you information on how to enter a location and where you're going to go. So for instance, last year, uh, Bill Perch and I went from uh, Illinois. I'm in LaGrange. So I started in LaGrange. And we took a trip out to Cooperstown. So you put in the starting location. Where are you going to end up? All you do is you hit direction, get directions. And it's going to give you the route there. You can see the blue line taking you from Illinois to Cooperstown. And on the PC or your laptop, this is going to be the easiest way to look and see. You can kind of just use these buttons down here to zoom in if you want to. Or just like a Google map, you hold down the button and you can move it over. You use the wheel on your mouse to zoom in so you can see where we're coming from. Here's the route. And if you start going along the route, you can figure out what places you might want to stop. So we go here and we're like, oh, here's a ballpark in Gary, Indiana. It's the steel yard. So you click on that little pin, you're going to get this pop-up box. And you go, eh, I don't think we're going to have time for a ball game in the morning when we're just on the road. So I'm not going to do anything with that. Kind of go along and without just clicking on every single one, say we get to this one here and it looks like it's in Shipshawana, Indiana. So you click on Shipshawana, Indiana. And this one's interesting because as you look at the pop-up box, there's in the general notes here, an indication that says needs verification. Anybody that was involved in the verification process was basically going down a list of sites, seeing if those sites were still there, and if so, cleaning up with new information or updated information. One of the great things about the pop-up box is you can do street view. When you click on street view, it's going to open up the street view from Google Maps. As you kind of pan around here, you see this looks like some kind of ice cream parlor. But the interesting thing is, as you look out these windows, there's the banner, the mural for the Shipshawana Indians. So I don't know if we're necessarily able to call this confirmed quite yet, but this is one of the great things that you can do is go right to the scene and figure out whether the thing is there or not by just hitting the street view option on the pop-up box. But we're gonna keep going east. We're thinking, well, maybe along Cleveland would be a good time to stop. Oh, here's the Jimmy Fox marker in Hoffman Park in Lakewood, Ohio. And you think, well, I wonder if there's a way that we can see the guardians when they're in town. Oh, here's the uh, map for Progressive Field. So you click on Progressive Field. All you have to do is click on Go to Website, or even at the top where you see Progressive Field, you hit that, it's going to open up the website. You can then go to see if the Guardians are in town. And if so, if you want to get um, tickets, you go right ahead and do that. But the neat thing is here, we're thinking, well, we definitely want to go to uh, Guardians game. So I'm going to add to route. So I've added to the route. And now you can see along the side here, 2401 Ontario Street is on the list of the locations. And again, with the street view, you look here, you see um, there's progressive feel from the air. I would expect that this is Google had their hot air balloon out this day. Interestingly, you can kind of get a good bird's eye view of the Hope Memorial Bridge. And these sculptures here are the guardians, the sculptures for which the team was kind of named. So it's kind of nice, neat to see the bird's eye view here. And if you go in even closer for this ballpark, there are several statues. So if you click on here, you see Gentomi. There's also a Lou Boudreau, Bob Feller, Larry Doby. 
you click on each of those and for each fall park, it's gonna show you the locations of each of those particular statues. There's a Ray Chapman marker here in the, the circle of fame or whatever they call it. I don't really know off the top of my head. And there's also a Frank Robinson statue that's kind of in the middle, oh, Heritage Park. So it's gonna give you information on when you're at that ballpark, all of the cool things to see around there too. So when you're in Cleveland, the thing that you definitely need to do if you haven't already done it is League Park, the Baseball Heritage Museum. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna to add to the route again. You see the 6601 Lexington pop up on the left. Brand new statue that was just put up, I think in the last year, Rocky Calavito in Little Italy. Oh, definitely wanna see that. You add, 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 add to the route over there. And like Bill and I did, we kind of stopped for the night in York, Pennsylvania. So we're gonna go along the route here. We're gonna find York, Pennsylvania. It's not really close to where we're headed. So what you can do now over on the left is say, add additional location. So you just type in York, Pennsylvania, hit enter, and that'll put it on the map. So what you do now is in order to optimize the route, the interesting thing with this is you're able to take Cooperstown where you're planning to end up. You just take that and you put it down at the very bottom. This is an important step. Otherwise it's not gonna give you the optimized route from your starting point to your ending point. You put Cooperstown at the bottom, you hit optimize route. This box pops up, yes, replace existing directions. And now what it's done is it's given you the route from LaGrange to Cooperstown with your stop in York, Pennsylvania, all the stops that you have in Cleveland. And it's given you all the information on how to get from one place to the other. If you've made this plan and you think, oh, you know what, I, actually now I wanna go back. I do wanna see that Jimmy Fox statue. You click on the Jimmy Fox, you can add that to the route. And again, you just move Cooperstown down to the bottom, add optimized route, replace directions, and it's gonna give you a brand new route that has you stopping first at the Jimmy Fox marker and then going on from there. At the very bottom here, you'll see there's a print button. If you wanted to print these, you could print them to a printer on paper. You can save it as a PDF. So if you want to come back at some point and take another look at it, you can do it that way. But um, that's the way to save it. Unfortunately, there is no way to save it kind of on the computer or on the, on the program. So if you do decide at some point later to put, you know, take this down and then have to come back to it, unfortunately, you're going to have to start over again. But at least if you print it, you kind of have an idea what you're doing, then that's going to help you. If you have it on this route and you decide, you know what, I don't want to look at everything, you could still go back. You could say, I only want to look and see where independent uh, minor league baseball games are being played. And here you go, you find these little green pins and you could kind of see where each of those are and you just kind of go from there. So in order to clear this, if you go back to the routing and say clear form, it really doesn't seem to do anything. And I don't know, I don't know how better to do this. I just hit the refresh. You hit the refresh, it starts right back over again and you're back at square one. So the next thing that's really cool about the map is at the top there, you see the search bar. And so all of the categories that we put the information into are searchable. So say you wanted to find out whether there were particular places across the country that honor Jackie Robinson. You could just start with Robinson by putting it in the search box. And if you wait for a second, you'll kind of see that a lot of options kind of pop up at the bottom. Jackie Robinson by name, there's parks named after him, a trail. There's also a Brooks Robinson because we haven't put in any more information than that. 
And if you put in Robinson all results, it's going to show you all of these things, which aren't going to be Jackie Robinson. You're going to see in York, Pennsylvania, here's a Brooks Robinson statue. You know, in Cleveland, here's that Frank Robinson statue that we saw earlier. You know, out here in Kentucky is the Jackie Robinson marker at Camp Breckenridge. So if you go back up here to the search box, put your comma in, in part to put Jackie in, then by name, it's just going to give you Jackie Robinson sites that you can go click on each of those and figure out if it's something you want to see. If, for instance, you wanted to clear this, all you do is you hit the black X, give it a couple seconds, and all of the sites pop back up. Now, for instance, you wanted to figure out whether you're going to be in an area of Virginia where there's Appalachian League ball games that you can go to. So you start typing in Appalachian. And if you're like me, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I sure don't know how to spell it on the first try. So you find here is the marker for the Appalachian League. You hit that, and it's going to show you all of the locations of the ballparks for the Appalachian League. Here's the Burlington Sock Puppets. And again, just like everything else, if you click here, go to website. If you click on here, it's going to take you to the Sock Puppets website. Street View is going to show you there's the ballpark, Burlington Athletic Stadium. It's pretty slick. And say, for instance, now you wanted to figure out what's there to see in Texas. So if you just put in Texas, the first one that pops up, it says Texas USA Geographic Region. If you click on this one, it's not going to be real helpful. All it does is it takes you basically to the geographic center of Texas. So if you're putting in Texas, you want to make sure that you're looking for, or any other states, that you're looking for where it has TX, you know, the abbreviation, and the state or the province or the territory. When you click on that, it's going to open up all of the sites that are in Texas. And you could do it for any of the states. So if we did Illinois, Illinois pops up here under state province. As you can see, it doesn't automatically take you there. You do have to kind of pan up to it. And you'll see all of the sites that are in Illinois. If you have a question, for instance, where would the affiliated teams in Illinois play? You just hit the affiliated teams and you see, wow, there's only one. It's Dozer, Dozer Park and that's where the Peoria Chiefs play. So that's it. So again, if you want to clear that, just hit the X. All of the sites will pop up again. Now, because we've got affiliated set here, all that's showing up are affiliated. You hit the show all. Now it resets and everything's back again. So if you now go over to the right, there's this little button that says satellite view. If you click that, it basically just toggles over to a map view. We've put it to default to the satellite view because it's more helpful when you're zooming in on a location, say for instance, now we're zooming in on Wrigley Field, you wanna see Wrigley Field instead of just the map view. So if you feel like it's easier to read in map view, that's just one of the settings you can use. The next one down here is Location Finder. And this is kind of a neat feature. It's gonna basically give you, by putting in information on where you're at or where you're going to be, the sites that are closest to you, it's going to list the nine closest sites. So you could put in something like Space Needle. You're going to be in Seattle. You're going to be at the Space Needle. It'll take you to the Space Needle. It's going to give you this green pin right where the Space Needle is. And then along the right-hand side, it's going to give you all the information on the nine closest locations with the distance from the Space Needle. And then again, it's going to give you information on how to uh, find each of them, turn by turn directions and so forth, and to view the location details. So if you hit view location details, here's a marker for Six Stadium. 
if you hit Street View, it's going to take you right there, and there's the market for Six Stadium. So you can kind of explore this way too. If you're going to be near a place and you want to find something that's close to there, you could do that. It's also going to be able to find something like you're going to be in Des Moines, Iowa. If I could spell it correctly. So it'll take a second. Now it kind of recenters itself over Des Moines. Zoom in, you're going to see Principal Park, where the Iowa Cubs play. You can see a street view there. Again, somebody's in a hot air balloon at night. Beautiful ballpark. And you can see other things here, the Bob Feller Museum. So if you go over to the Bob Feller Museum, uh, you can see that it's not necessarily just a museum anymore. It's also the city hall there for band meter. Kind of walk in there, there's displays here. And if you look over to this area, there's more Bob Feller memorabilia here and along here. So you can kind of get an idea of what you're getting into. So it's pretty cool that way. If you're in the map and you want to zoom or if you want to pinpoint it and go right to that street view, not only are you able to use your mouse, but along the bottom here, along the left, is the zoom button and the zoom out button. And also, let's say, for instance, you're in Des Moines and you're near Principal Park. You also can use this little guy. You grab the little guy and you put him on the sidewalk or whatever. And it's going to take you to the view of where that is. So it's actually, you can tell somebody on a bike, <laughs> the, the data team riding their bike around Principal Park. So all this information kind of at your fingertips. The map, unfortunately, as you kind of go through, it may have some limitations. As you can see, it's not going to recenter sometimes. If you enter new information, it's going to be something where it shows up in another part of the country. You may have to zoom out and kind of pan over to it. Unfortunately, it's not set up at this point, and I don't know that we can do it to save any of your last settings. Like, say, for instance, you, you never want to see grades. I don't know that we are able to set it up like that. Unfortunately, it's not going to know where you are in this mode. There is a setting that we just we tried, and it was too buggy. I think it depends on what kind of equipment you're using. And unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. And as you'll see on your phone, if you've tried it, it may be a little bit cumbersome on your phone, but I think we have some uh, tricks for you to show you how to do a little bit better phone-wise. So that's kind of the live demonstration here. Um, I'm just going to see if there's any questions along here. Got something here if we're trying to see it. Okay, so we're all good. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to switch back now over to the PowerPoint. And as we saw, this is kind of what it's going to look like when you open it up on your laptop or your personal computer. You may not necessarily want to use it on your computer, though, or maybe you don't have your computer with you, or you're using a desktop that's not portable. It's also something you can use on your tablet, an iPad or whatever, whatever kind of tablet you have. Um, it's going to be something that I was able to kind of play with on the train this morning. As long as you have a tablet and uh, it's, it's got cellular data on it, then you're good to go. If not, you can use your cell phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot. That's how I used it and it worked perfectly. It certainly, as you'll see, is going to have more functionality than the phone does. Um, you might find that it works better in landscape mode. But the weird thing is, if you remember when we were doing the, the route optimization, it's not going to let you take each of those different places that you have in already and just kind of click on it and move it down. Unfortunately, you, you have to delete the ending point 
and then re-enter it as a new entry. So for instance, on the example, if you're going from Illinois to Cooperstown, you would just have to eliminate Cooperstown, add a new one at the bottom, and then you're able to do it where you optimize the route, it's gonna come back to it. So on the right here, you see what it looks like on a tablet in portrait mode. And you see what it looks like here now on this one in landscape mode. As you can see here along the left, it's got those same places, you know, we're going to be able to stop at the different locations along the way. It's going to show your route and it works out pretty well. So the next thing is looking at it on your phone. I'm assuming that a lot of people probably have already kind of seen it on their phone and know what it's all about. I'm hoping that when you're looking at this demonstration, you're thinking, well, maybe it's gonna be easier for me to kind of plan my trip on a computer or on a tablet and then use my phone when I'm kind of on the go. You can certainly use your phone too when you're out on the go or to plan your trip and so forth. That's how you access the information. But I think you'll find that it's just a little bit easier if you have access to a laptop or even a tablet to do it that way. But the coolest thing about the phone is going to be the turn by turn directions. If you have, on your phone, Google Maps, it's gonna give you the option to just hit, go to Google Navigate and it'll give you directions from wherever you are in the world to that site, turn by turn, it's beautiful. And again, just like on the other ways to do it, your phone is going to have the option to put different kinds of markers on that you want or eliminate markers that you don't want, those kinds of things. And it's gonna have the same option to list the nearest. So forth. Just a word of caution to navigate as an app on your phone. It doesn't seem to link up at this point with either Apple Maps or Waze or anything. So. In order to use it, you do need to have Google Maps. So on the smartphone, if you see back this way, when you have it in portrait mode, really all you're able to do is click up in the upper right-hand corner, those three parallel bars is the menu, and we'll go through what that does. But in order to zoom in on this map in this mode, you basically have to just kind of spread your fingers and you'll probably find as you're doing that, that you're accidentally clicking on pins and pop-ups are popping up and it can be kind of frustrating. So a tip that I do when I'm using this and kind of zooming in, try your best to maybe start up in Upper Canada or on the Sabre Baseball Map logo where there's no pins and you can kind of get a little bit closer. And then as you're zooming in, avoid the pins at all costs if you can. If you find that to be too cumbersome, if you flip your phone over to landscape mode, it's going to look like this now. So if you look in the lower right hand or left hand corner, you have the zoom in button, you have the zoom out button, and all of the tools are now in a different format. It's not just in that menu bar at the top. So you may find that this is easier to work with with the zooming buttons. And as you probably know already, if you, you toggle from portrait to landscape and back, it'll just format it the way that you have it. And maybe it's easier to look at it one way or you like it the other, but just both are available. So just want to make sure you knew that. When you go to the search, once you hit that menu, you'll have three icons pop up at the top. The magnifying glass is just the search. So when you hit the magnifying glass, you're going to see the screen look like what it looks like in the middle of this slide. You put in your search information here. Unfortunately, with the phone, like we saw earlier, if you put in Robinson, it's not going to give you that drop down list. So if you are looking for a name, just kind of keep in mind it's better to put in last name, comma, first name, and it'll work better. As far as the Next one in the middle, that's that search location. You see kind of the two pins with the line between them. So that, again, if you wanna put in your current location, 
Um, I'm in Chicago, Illinois, or I'm at the Space Needle, or I'm at the Empire State Building, or whatever it is, that one on the right, you'll be able to see. The last icon there at the top, you see is it looks like a pair of pliers and a screwdriver kind of crisscrossed. That's the tool menu. And when you go into that, that's where you're gonna find the grouping tool and the route optimization and directions tool. The grouping tool, again, is just where you'll turn on and off if you want to any of the different locations by category. And then the route optimization or directions tool the same as we saw on the laptop, it'll give you directions, but it doesn't really seem to work as well for your phone. What's really going to work well for your phone is the pop up box, and we'll get to that in a second. If you put in the routes, though, like we did before, and you turn your phone sideways, you'll see here we are starting in Chicago, Illinois, LaGrange, Illinois. And this is the route kind of that's taken us to Cooperstown. And here we are kind of arriving in Cooperstown. So it's all there. It's, it's something that you'll be able to see and work on if you need to. But um, the really cool thing with the phone is this. So when you go to a place that you think, yes, I want to see it, League Park in Cleveland, I'm going to hit right here where it says Open Google Navigate. Or you can hit Street View. But when you hit Street View again, basically what it's showing you on your phone is here's the marker. You see the picture of it here in the pop-up and there it is on the street. You know it's there, we're good to go. When you hit open, open in Google Navigate, what's gonna happen is now the map is gonna show up like this in the picture on the right. As you can see in the top, where it's starting is your location. Your phone knows where you're at. And where it's going to take you, those are the GPS coordinates for the League Park marker that we have right there. It's going to put the route for you on there and tell you how long it's going to get there or how long it's going to take to get there. In order to start it, all you have to do is you go down to the bottom and hit start. So if I want to leave right now and go to Cleveland, I could be there in about five minutes and 20 or five hours and 20 minutes, and we're good to go. So this is really cool. I think the best way to show this off though is to kind of see it in action. So this is me and Bill Perch did this and I hope you enjoy. All right, it's John Ranconelli. I'm here with Bill Perch. We're in his driveway and we're going to demonstrate how the Sabre baseball map works on your phone. Our first point of interest today is right near Guaranteed Rate Field, and it's the old Comiskey Park home plate. As you can see from the marker, the last time that this was verified was actually by Bill back in February 2022. At that point, it was blocked by some construction fencing, and we have every reason to believe that it's been open at this point, and we're going to do our best to verify. So the great part about this is once you figure out the place you want to go, all you have to do is hit open in Google Navigate. It'll go right to a map that's going to show you how to get there from wherever you are. We're in Bill's driveway. We're going to leave right now. So I'm going to hit start. Head north on Hillside Avenue toward West Van Buren Street, then turn right onto West Van Buren. So here we are, Sabre baseball map got us here in a nice, quick, clean route. We're now standing at the batter's boxes where the old Comiskey Park used to stand from 1910 through 1990. Think of all the players that stood in these boxes right here. Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Hank Greenberg, Ted Williams, Rod Carew, and a bunch of White Sox players too. It's actually amazing to be here. All right, we're going to leave the Comiskey Park home plate, and our next stop is the West Side Grounds. This is where the Cubs played through 1915. Same thing with Google Navigate, hit the button. And it's going to give us a route 
taking us directly from Comiskey Park home plate up to the marker. We're about nine minutes away. We're gonna get in the car and we're gonna go. Here we are, West Side Grounds marker. A quick nine minute ride from Comiskey Park home plate. You see it right here on the app. You can see it live here in person. This is where the Cubs won the World Series in 1907, in 1908. And although none of the original structure still stands here, the marker is located at the area where the flagpole and the clubhouse used to be located. And here we are, we are standing on the spot where Tinkers to Evers to Chance happened and Mordecai Brown pitch. No sign of any baseball here, but we do have that marker outside. Here we are at what used to be the Piazza di Maggio. As you can see in the background is the former location of the National Italian American Home. The museum, as far as we know, has moved and may be opening in a new location, but what you see here right behind me is where there used to be the really cool statue of Joe DiMaggio. We don't know where that statue is going at this point, but part of what we're trying to do with the Landmarks Committee is verify where things are and also verify when things aren't there any longer. So this is the last stop on our trip today is to verify whether Joe D is still here and we've determined that he's not. Okay, so I know that um, I've been getting a lot of calls. The Oscar buzz is real. And uh, Bill and I are very honored to be getting the kind of accolades we are for that amazing uh, documentary work of film. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, hopefully that kind of showed you a little bit about how the map works in action on your phone. Um, hopefully you're excited to get out and start trying it. But basically what's next for the committee, this is a living project. And every year there are going to be changes to leagues and there's gonna be name changes for teams and there's gonna be name changes for ballparks and ballparks are going to be torn down and new ballparks are gonna be added. So we're gonna to need to do an ongoing project at least annually to make sure that all of the information is as accurate as possible. We have put a standardized errata and additions sheet on the page, and we'll go through that in just a second. Uh, we'll also be wanting to add photographs and last visit dates, so we kind of have a benchmark as to the last time it was actually visited in person. And we're also kind of talking about potentially doing other separate maps. Uh, Dr. Fred Wirth has an unbelievable database of ball player websites or uh, grave sites. Um, there's been talk maybe with the baseball card committee of doing something where we have a completely separate map that just shows where baseball card stores are located in different places around the country, those kinds of things. But in terms of the sheet, I'm gonna get back to that and hopefully this will work where you can see it. As we're back on the Landmarks Committee site, if you come down where it says corrections, and it's please click here for any changes, you'll see a Google sheet opens up here. Um, somebody's already put something in here with regard to a new NCAA stadium. Um, if you have any general questions or comments or suggestions, you could put it in the A column here. You don't have to fill everything out. But you just kind of go along. Hopefully, these are kind of self-explanatory as to what you put in. And uh, we'll take a look at this periodically and add these if needed, or make the corrections if needed as things go along. So basically, this was a big project. You can expect that. There were a lot of people that needed to help with this. I wanted to thank all the volunteers. So hopefully I didn't forget anybody here. 
If you're on the list, if you want to stand up and kind of tip your cap at home to whoever might be watching with you, that'd be great. But thank you so much for this, this army of volunteers who helped get this going and helped uh, verify the information and so forth. And of course, uh, thanks are due to um, Scott Bush and the Sabre Board of Directors and Jacob Pomeranke for their help and their support uh, to make this come from just an idea and get it off the ground and make it into something that's real and hopefully something that people will use. So that's really about it. I hope that you've enjoyed the presentation. Maybe you've learned a little bit and hopefully feel comfortable wanting to explore and use the Sabre Baseball map. Um, if you don't already follow the committee on Twitter, we're at Sabre Landmarks. And if at any point you need to contact us, you could find our email addresses on the landing page for the Landmarks Committee. But at this point, that's really the whole situation. Um, if there's questions or comments or anybody else wants to uh, kind of talk about this, I'm happy to do that. All right, so I don't know if you could see me, but we're off on the PowerPoint. So let me just look through the chat and see if there's any questions. Um, let's see. Okay, Bill says he's working on the Oscar speech right now. So that's good. I'm glad to know that. Um, let's see, can you make this recorded Zoom session a tutorial on the Landmarks page? I think it'd be easy enough. I would expect Jacob could just kind of post it on that page with a link to it once it's put up on YouTube. And I think what we'll probably do is maybe we get some feedback with regard to how the map is working for people put up some frequently asked questions and make it as easy for everybody to use as possible. I know it's not necessarily as self-explanatory as we would like, but um, it's as good as I think it's gonna get at this point. So I'm really happy with the way this is coming together. So um, let's see, uh, Stu asks about sending pictures. So pictures is unfortunately the way the database works and loads into the mapping program it has to be a very specific format. And um, I, I, we're still kind of working on getting that together. Um, a couple of people have already, if you're familiar with the Imgur website, um, I think probably what makes most sense is to put together some kind of tutorial that we can post on the website. We wanna start loading pictures in, but it's gonna be a pretty tedious process because each one needs to have a web address and it needs to be in a specific format. And then we need to take it from that format and load it into our database that loads into the mapping program. So we're working on that and um, we'll be hopefully back to everybody shortly with how this is going on. Uh, let's see, there's a question. Is there a minimum set of data fields on the Google Sheet to get a landmark loaded or all required? That's a good question. Really what you wanna do is put in as much as you have. That first column, if you can remember, it's either a site ID or a new. So if there's an existing pop-up, if it's already on the map, put in a site ID number so we know what to change. And if there's new information or information that needs to be changed, only fill out those boxes so that we know what needs to be changed. If there's a new thing that you would like to have added and to be considered for putting on the map, Put in all the information that you have. The most important thing is going to be categorizing it, naming what it is, putting in the address, and putting in those GPS coordinates. So you don't have to put everything in. For instance, if it's a, if it's a historic ballpark that's not on the list and you don't know what years it opened and you don't know what the capacity was, you don't have to put that in. So just put in as much as you have. Uh, let's see, there's a question. Will this be discussed at the conference in Baltimore? 
Uh, Mark Armour is planning to do a presentation. I'm not exactly sure what the scope of that presentation is quite yet, but we do have it scheduled. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember what day and time, but there will be a session for the Landmarks Committee there. So hopefully if we have questions between here and there, we'll be able to get some answers for you on it. But looks like that might be the last of the questions. Oh, okay, Bob says, can we share this with anyone we want? The, the Landmarks Committee and the Sabre Baseball Map is open to everybody. So if you wanna share it with somebody that's not in Sabre, they're more than welcome to use it. We hope that people use it. We're pretty proud of the information and we're pretty proud of the work that we've done on it. And we hope that people will, when they see this, maybe be encouraged to join Sabre, thinking that it's pretty cool and so forth. So I'm hoping that as many people as possible will see it, use it. It'd be pretty cool if at some point it was you know, mentioned on MLB Network or something, but at some point, hopefully you do a Google search for Sabre Baseball Map, it's gonna bring you right here. So that's kind of what the end goal is to have this um, for use by all baseball fans, just like pretty much everything else Sabre does. Uh, let's see, Scott just mentioned that chapter leaders can share this. Um, I'm hoping that those kind of grassroots and local efforts will help us get the sites that we may have missed at this point or the corrections that we may have missed. And it would be pretty cool at some point to have at least a photograph of somebody who's visited in person to each of these places so that we could put it up there. Just a note on the photographs too, it's gonna to be important that any pictures that you're gonna be loading is something that you've taken with your own camera or your own phone. What we can't do is put photographs on it that you may have grabbed from the internet. There's gonna be obviously copyright issues and so forth, but if you've taken that picture with your own camera, that's great. As you look through the map, you'll see that I kind of have preloaded in a bunch of photographs just so you can kind of see how things work. If you have a better picture, certainly send it. And if you think that's better than the one that I have on there, um, and mine's just a placeholder. I'm certainly happy to put people's pictures on there. So don't think just because one's there already, if you have a better one, please send it along. Also, if anybody that's a chapter leader wants someone from the Landmarks Committee to do a presentation, a local one, kind of highlighting things in their geographic area so that we can talk about it, happy to do it. So please you know, contact me and uh, we can figure something out. Okay, Stu asks, how do we go about adding landmarks or changing information such as a more accurate GPS reading? That's where you go to the Landmarks Committee landing page. You go to that Google Sheet where you do the errata or additions, and you go there and you make the changes there. Again, if it's something that needs to be corrected, make sure you put the site ID in that very first column and make the changes that you need to make. If it's better GPS coordinates and that's all you're changing, just put in those better GPS coordinates and, and we're ready to go. If you're looking to add a place, like we kind of gone through, have gone through, there are things that we want on the map. There are things that we don't want on the map. So if you have something you would like to submit for consideration, please put it on there and we'll take a look at it. If we think that it warrants addition, we'll put it on. If we don't, then um, it'll basically just be um, considered at some point in the future if you want to bring it up again. But um, we're trying not to have it too cluttered. And like I said, a lot of things that have been submitted at this point include grave sites of people I've never heard of. So I don't think that people across the country are really going to want that. Or a ballpark that's named after a famous ball player but never played there and there's no statue or commemorative plaque or anything there. Those are the kinds of things that we're kind of on the lookout for. But basically, that's what we're looking for. Please, if you have suggestions or if you have changes, please let us know on that sheet. Uh, let's see, there's a question. Is there a tabular list of landmarks available to review what's already been loaded versus searching? There is not. What we have on the back end of the map is a, a pretty 
detailed database. It's nearly 2,000 different individual data points. And then there's what's some are 15 to 19 columns of information that may, may not be loaded in. So the way that we're giving this information to the end user is via the map. There is not a, some kind of list or anything that we have at this point. There is a potential that maybe we can do something like that, but um, it's just something that's not um, on the, the menu at this point. Um, Bob asked a very question, who is in the painting behind you? That is my wife's great grandmother. I don't even know her name, but that's who it is. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So it looks like we're just about eight o'clock, just about an hour in. Um, if there's any more questions, please ask them now. Um, I, I don't know if you could tell by the video um, that unfortunately I maybe came across a little bit dry, but I'm really excited about this project. And I'm pretty passionate about this and baseball travel. Anybody that may know me, I'm the kind of person that is driving hours out of my way to see some plaque in the middle of a cornfield. So that's who I am. And that's kind of what I'm looking to do. And I think this is pretty cool to find that there's all kinds of people all over the country that are into the same stuff like this and are interested in baseball travel. You're going to find that if you're doing a dedicated baseball trip, if you're doing a business trip, if you're going on vacation and you think you might be able to sneak away for a little bit to see something that maybe the rest of your family might not be interested in, this is kind of the way to do it. You could plan ahead, or even like I said, you're at the space needle with your family. You just want to find out if there's anything that you can kind of go see real quick in the morning uh, before breakfast the next morning, then you could do that too. So. Um, there's a question from Christopher says, are there plans to make this a full international map or US only? Well, I mean, it's, if, if you can see at this point, it includes North America right now. It is the United States. There's Canada sites on there. And there are some sites that uh, Donna Muscarella added in Puerto Rico. Can this be international at some point? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, if there's somebody, for instance, that speaks Japanese or Korean that can add those sites in Japan and Korea, that'd be fantastic, or any of the other Asian baseball leagues. Um, I don't speak Spanish very well, but if there's somebody that can help translate the uh, Mexican league sites and put those on a map, would love to do that. If there's winter ball that might be played in any of the other uh, Caribbean countries, we'd love to have that stuff on there. So that's certainly a goal. It would be great to have everything across the world. Um, I know there's professional baseball played in Australia and Italy too. So if we can add those things, that would be great. Uh, we just kind of started with the US and Canada at this point and hopefully can kind of go from there. So um, if you have some special information or you speak the language or have some information that uh, you might want to add to the list, please put it on that sheet and we'll kind of take a look at it and we'll go from there. But um, if anybody has any questions, like I said, you can reach out to me. Um, Chris and Mark too. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. I I'm hoping that you get on this and explore, have some fun, take a look and see what you can find. And uh, hopefully I'll we'll get to see you at a ball game soon. But thanks for joining us and take care. <laughs>